Okay, so we're ready for our first game, which is going to be Pong. And I know that's not very interesting, and I know you're rolling your eyes because everyone has done Pong, but Pong is a good game to begin with because it has a lot of basic mechanics that we'll use in almost every game that we make. So open up a new project, and before we can actually make the game, we're going to need some assets to work with. You see over here on the left, we have our asset library and all the different types of assets that we can have. I'm not going to go through all of these right now, I'll just cover them as we need them. The first type we'll use are the sprites, which are going to be the images that we will see on screen. There are a couple ways we can put them in. We can right click on the folder and say create sprite, or we can use the toolbar shortcuts up here, and the one for sprite is this little Pac-Man. You just click it and it'll bring up the sprite dialog box. The first thing I'm going to do is give it a name. I'm going to call it sprite underscore player underscore blue. You can really call it whatever you want, but using the underscores is a pretty typical naming convention inside of Game Maker. It's also important to differentiate the type of asset that you are using, because if you name different types of assets the same thing, such as a player blue sprite and a player blue object, then when you are creating the game and you call the name player blue, Game Maker might get confused and it won't know whether you're talking about the sprite or the object or whatever. This is also a pretty long name, and in the future I'll probably shorten them, but for right now, in these first early videos, I want to be as descriptive as possible. So now we actually have to create the sprite's image, and there are two ways we can do this. The first is by clicking on Edit Sprite and using the built-in paint program. So go ahead and click it. It'll open up the sprite editor, and we actually need to put in an image, a frame, and you do that with the little white paper here, or File, New. And we want this to be a width of 24 and a height of 72. Click OK. And you can see we now have an empty frame. So double click on this, and we now have the Paint program. Uh, if you use the mouse wheel to scroll, you can zoom in a bit. Or you can use the magnifying glasses up here. You've got paint tools over here that should be familiar if you have used Microsoft Paint or a similar program. I would encourage you to play around with things, see what they do. We have a few other special menus up here, and they have a few more advanced features than what you might be used to in just a regular old paint program. Uh, for now, though, we can probably just get away with putting in a single color by clicking on the paint bucket here. And since we call this player blue, let's just fill it in with blue. And to save your changes, click the check mark and do it again. And now we have our image. You can also load in an image that you may have created in a program like Photoshop. And that's what I'm going to do just so these videos are a little bit more visually appealing. So just click load, it'll bring up the window. And once you find the asset, click on it and you will see it pops up over here. And there are a number of other options make opaque, remove background, smooth edges. These mostly deal with transparency in an image, but since this is just a rectangle, uh, we don't have that. So I'm just going to click Open, and now you can see I have a nicer looking image. The final thing we want to do is move the origin. The origin is basically the X and Y coordinate that a sprite determines its position on screen by, as well as how it measures distance from itself. By default, it is up in the top left corner. But if we click on Center here, we now see it is in the middle of the sprite. This will become important later on when we do some calculations, so make sure you center it. And click OK. We're also going to need a sprite for the other paddle, so make another one. Call it Sprite Player Orange. I'm going to load in my other paddle. And make sure it is centered. If you were going for a more traditional look with white paddles on a black background, you could really just get away with using one sprite for both player one and player two. It's not always necessary to make a single sprite for every object in your game. We're going to need a couple more sprites. We're going to need a ball. So go ahead and create that sprite ball. And this is going to be 24 by 24 and just uh, draw yourself a circle here. 
make sure it goes all the way. That's not very good. There we go. Uh, again, I'm going to put in one that I've already created. And we need to center this as well. Now, this one is going to be just a little bit different. You see over here on the right, we have a box for collision checking. And this determines how objects interact with each other when they touch. Now, if we click on the Modify Mask button here, we can bring up the mask window. And you can see that this box over here is completely grayed out. That includes the area around our circle. What that means is that by default, our sprite is going to be treated like a box. And that's not what we want, because the ball is circular. So to fix that, just click OK. And now we come back to our collision checking box, and we check the little box that says Precise Collision Checking. And it will also automatically check Separate Collision Masks. So if we click the Modify Mask button again, we can now see that it's only applying it to the sprite, and around it is being left alone. Now when this window is open, you can see that there are more precise controls available to us so that we can really fine-tune the bounding box on our sprite. I'm not going to go into detail on all the options right now because we'll come back to this in later games. So for now, just click OK and make sure this is all set. Click OK. And the last sprite we're going to need for now is the wall sprite. So sprite wall. And this is going to be 32 by 32. And you can just make this some random color. It doesn't really matter, because we are not actually going to see it. And it does not have to be centered, so that's fine. Now, the sprites themselves don't actually do anything. They're just images. To actually be able to use them in our game, we have to convert them to objects. So you can do that by coming over to the Objects folder, right-clicking, Create Object, or up in the toolbar, it's this little ball right here. And click that, it will open up the object window. And basically, now we just duplicate everything we did in the sprites, but in object form. So object, player, blue. And the sprite, if you click on this box, will open up your list of sprites. Give the sprite player blue. And leave everything else as is for now. Click OK. And so we basically just do that for all the other ones. I'm also going to get rid of this compiler message thing because we don't need it for right now. And the final major thing we need is a room, which is just another word for a level. But it also acts as a screen. The size of the room determines the screen resolution your game will run at. So we can come over here to Rooms, Create Room, or click on the, the little white rectangle up here and it will bring up a much different box here and we want to give this a name and that is on the settings tab up here and we will call this room main leave it at a default 640 by 480 and speed 30 the speed is basically your frame rate so by default it will run at 30 frames per second that's pretty standard but a lot of games nowadays run at about 60 frames per second but 30 will be fine for what we're doing. So let's go ahead and add our objects to the room by going back to our Objects tab. And we can see right now we have the object wall selected, and that's just because it's the last one we created. Uh, I'm going to select Player Blue first, put it in, Player Orange, the ball, and I'm going to put in a wall down here, and wall up here. Now you'll notice I moved the room around just a little bit there. If you look over here on the left, there is a list of rather unintuitive commands on how to interact with the room window over here. I definitely recommend giving this a look, memorizing some of these things. It'll save you some time and frustration. But anyway, let's get everything placed properly now. Uh, first I'm going to come up to these little wall blocks, and I'm going to grab the bottom right corner and stretch it out all the way, whoa, disappeared, all the way to the right. And you can see over here in the uh, scale X box, it went from 1 to 20 because I am scaling it 20 times that way. We want to do the same thing down with the bottom. Come over here, I'm, this time I'm going to type in 20, 
and you can see it stretched it out. You should also make sure that these walls are actually placed outside the room, not in it. That is because we will not actually see them, but we want our ball to be able to bounce off of them. So now let's move our paddles into place, and you'll notice that we can't quite get it perfectly centered. We put the origin point in the center of the object, and so it's snapping to the grid at that point. However, the center of our room is actually right along this horizontal, in between the two grid lines. Fortunately, we can alter how our grid is laid out. If we go up here to our snap X and snap Y, we can see that it is by default set to a 32 by 32 grid. Our X is okay. It's lined up along here, and that's fine. That's a good distance away from the edge of the room. But we want to alter our Y grid. Cut it in half at 16, and you can see it added a bunch more lines. So now we can move it up, and that looks about center. We can also turn off the grid by clicking this little toggle right here. And yeah, that's about center. So turn it back on. Then we can move the other player into place, as well as the ball. Turn that off, and that looks good. The final touch we should add is our background. If we come over to the background tabs here, we see that by default we've got this bland gray color in the back. Much like our sprites, however, we can actually create a background image to put in. So leaving this open, I'm going to come over here to backgrounds, and you can right-click Create Background, or coming up over here to this little painting icon, click that, and it will bring up the Background Properties window. And just like the sprites, you can edit the background and do your thing there, or you can load one in. So I'll select my image and open it, and there it is. Give it a name, Background Main, and before I close this, one final thing I want to mention is that even though I am loading these images in, I actually did make them inside of Game Maker's paint program. If we open up the edit background and come in here, you can see that up here in the toolbar, we have the ability to save our image as a PNG file. Now the reason it's a PNG file is because PNGs can retain transparency. A GIF file can save transparency as well to an extent, but a JPEG will fill in any transparent area with white. So I would recommend that as you are creating your assets for your games to save them as either a GIF or a PNG file type. So I'm going to click the checkbox, click OK, and now we've got our background image. I suppose you could use a JPEG or a bitmap image if you really wanted to, and GameMaker does have the ability to knock out that background. If we look real quick at the ball, and just double-clicking on it, we'll bring open this window again. If we go to the load sprite and see the image that I brought in, you remember these little check boxes I talked about that dealt with transparency? Well, if we check the make opaque real quick, you can see that it puts in a little green box. Well, let's say I made this image and gave it a bright green or bright pink or whatever kind of background. Well, I could then click the Remove Background, and it would remove that color. I think you have more precise control over it, however, if you actually put in the transparency yourself when you're making the image in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever. So I'm going to turn that back off and cancel this, and click OK. OK, so our background is now ready to be put in, so we just come to this little image bar here, Insert Background Main, and there it is. We can turn off the grid, and that's what it's going to look like. You can also see it down here in the thumbnail preview. And then to save everything that we've done in the room, we just click the little checkbox, and we get a message. It says, there are instances or tiles outside the room. Should I remove them? This is referring to these wall objects that we created. This is basically to clean up anything that we may have left outside the room by accident, and we just didn't notice and delete. However, in this case, we are deliberately putting these outside of the room, so no, we don't want them to be removed. And for right now, that's all we need. In the next video, we'll look at adding player input and start moving things around.